and welcome to the How We Do Digital Ministry podcast. I'm your host, Charlotte Elia. This podcast is produced by Faith Growth, which you can find at faithgrowth.com. Faith Growth helps church clients build their digital presence and engage with their community online. And on this podcast, we talk to leaders who are out in the world doing just that, engaging folks through digital ministry. Today, I am delighted to have Pastor Brianna Haida from P Painted Prayers with me. Welcome, Pastor Brianna. Oh, thank uh, you. <laughs> Brianna, please introduce yourself and tell us how you do digital ministry. Yeah, so boy, big question, right? Uh, so <laughs> I'm Brianna. I am uh, based in Rapid City, South Dakota, which is pretty much a stone's throw from Mount Rushmore. Um, I am a wife and a mom of four teenagers, which is exhausting, but exciting and always an adventure. Um, I struggle with chronic illness, which is part of what uh, sort of led me to the online ministry world. Um, and I am planting or have just planted a digital church called Painted Prayers Church. And uh, yeah, that's, that's uh, kind of the the gist of it in a nutshell. Okay. So tell us some more about painted prayers. What led you to this? I, so, um, sneaky Jesus tricked me into <laughs> planting a church without me realizing that's what I was doing. Um, so I actually started this as a nonprofit ministry back in 2016 and it all stemmed from sort of my own spiritual healing journey and uh, my own health crisis and, and all these other factors, kind of mm -hmm. this perfect storm um, that I really just could not get out of on my own and needed God to step in and, and take action in my life. And so um, through my love for painting and journaling and art and creativity, um, I was able to really connect with God in new and surprising ways. And then God said, okay, now that I've taught you how to do this, like you need to go teach other people as well. So I, uh, eventually started the ministry and, um, it started out really simple with just me doing workshops and teaching people kind of how to connect with God through art and, uh, kind of snowballed from there. And it really was just a matter of me taking the next step and the next step and the next step. And, um, I was doing all of this online. I started teaching other people how to teach it. So sort of like training instructors to go out and do these workshops. And so I had these people kind of scattered all across the country. And we, I think we've got, we had 17 ish leaders doing that. And then, uh, at the same time I was doing digital ministry, I stepped into the role of digital pastor for my local church. Okay. And so I kind of had these two worlds going side by side, all completely online because I'm, I'm disabled and it's really difficult for me to even leave the house, let alone go out and be in the world. And then COVID hit. And of course, everybody was panicking thinking, how on earth do we go online? How do we continue doing ministry now that everybody is isolated? And I was like, hey, welcome to my world, guys. <laughs> so um, I found myself in all of these conversations, one after the other, about how I was doing um, both the ministry that I was doing in Painted Prayers, but also the, the church stuff that I was pastoring. And those conversations started to get really kind of muddied. And I was bringing in examples from both sides and started even confusing myself in the process. And uh, in one particular conversation, I was talking to a gentleman who uh, is really heavily involved in digital ministry, and he was trying to get a handle on how I was doing discipleship. And I used the, the training curriculum as from Painted Prayers as the example. And he's like, man, that is, that is incredible. So you have this whole digital pathway set up. And I was, I was like, oh, wait, no, that's not for the church. And he's like, okay, so let's put the church stuff aside. He's like, tell me about this ministry. Like, talk to me about this. And so I kind of explained what we were doing and, and how it was working and the community that was growing around it. And he stopped me and he said, now, tell me how that's not a church. Uh-huh. And my response was, uh, well, cause I haven't called it a church. Mm -hmm. I, I didn't have a good answer for that. So, uh, long story 
little bit shorter. I uh, spent a lot of time in prayer and consideration and, and asking God, like, is that what we're doing here? And if so, like, how do we, how do we backtrack a little bit and make sure that we're setting this up properly and, and kind of doing this, this right. And so that has been how I've spent the last year is really just going through that whole process to make sure that I'm, I've built the foundation correctly and kind of have it all grounded solidly so that it can support itself as a church. Well, that's really exciting and maybe a little scary, just a little yes, bit. <laughs> absolutely terrifying, but yeah, absolutely fun. <laughs> can you tell me more about the particular ministry of Painted Prayers? What it's you know, obviously involving art, therapeutic, healing ministry. Um, can you say more yeah. about that? Absolutely. So um, the way I kind of think about it is that art and creativity are sort of the, this sounds really bad, but the bait in our trap. <laughs> and so, so like, that's what we use to draw people in, right? It's, it's something that's really accessible. It's something that is, um, it sparks curiosity and fun. It suspends judgment. And so uh, by engaging people in creativity first, then we're able to sort of help get past like the natural defenses and guards that people have put up. Um, the majority of people that we serve are either unable or unwilling to go to an actual church building. Like they will never step through the doors of a church, either because they physically can't, they emotionally and mentally can't, or they are just so spiritually wounded that that's not even something they would ever consider doing. Mm -hmm. So um, by, by opening the doors with creativity and uh, community, then we start to be able to build relationships and make connections and help people to see the truth of connecting with God in a way that sort of gets the religion part of it out of the way. And so that they can have sort of that direct connection with God and, and learn um, sort of how to do some of those initial, uh, like letting God guide you through some of that initial healing so that you can actually get to a point where you can start talking about coming back to faith. Wow. Okay. Very, very cool. Very interesting. So how would you describe a community forming around this ministry, the people that you have engaged? We're wondering, I mean, the big question right now, or well, gosh, how many big questions are there? But <laughs> right. one is sort of, you know, what does a community look like in a, in a digital sphere that's not bound anyway by geography? So uh, what what other ties are, are, are bringing people toward painted prayer and keeping them right. there. No, that's a great question. So I, I have always found community online, which is kind of, again, like just really interesting the way that God has sort of planted the seeds all along through my life. And mm -hmm. I mean, all the way back to like pre AOL days and in like the IIRC chat rooms and things like that, like all my right. whole family yeah. was involved in that. And so that's how we would stay connected. Uh -huh. Um, and and then moving forward, like I would plug into when I was a professional photographer, I plugged into a, a photography group online that was like this whole huge, um, like we had conferences, we had, I mean, all these things where people would, would gather, but primarily all the relationships took place online. And so the idea of online relationships to me is a no brainer. And then as I became disabled and was unable to, to take place take part in, you know, the, the local community around me, I found myself leaning more and more into those online relationships. And so, um, for me, it's really has never been a question of whether or not community can exist online because I've lived it like sure. half my life. I've lived it. So, um, that all that being said, the vision for community behind painted prayers is sort of layered uh, so we've got the, the online community, we have our own platform that people come into and they can connect and talk and discuss and learn together. Um, they can create, there's, you know, they can create separate spaces for talking about their special interests. So, you know, um, everybody sort of has their own way of connecting creatively with God. Uh, some people it's actually art, some people it's gardening or cooking or, you know, all these different expressions of, of, uh, creation 
that we engage in. And so they're able to connect with people through those similar interests. Um, they can connect through Bible study and uh, theological interests, things like that. But then the other, the next layer out is that we, we want people to sort of like fill themselves up with all of this creative and curious and, you know, great energy and then like not be able to contain it. <laughs> so it just sort of spills over into their neighborhoods, into their communities too. And so the people that they connect with at work or in their, you know, their kids play dates or, you know, different social groups that they find themselves a part of, um, being able to invite those people into this with them. So, you know, we have people who will say, Hey, you should come over and we can, we can bake cookies together this weekend. And that's how they'll connect and be able to sort of like have that, that in-person community need met as well. So, so that's kind of the idea is that we've got this, this online platform container that, that sort of generates um, the core community of what we're building. And then mm -hmm. that spills over into people's local lives. And so then they start bringing in their neighbors and friends and family into the fold. Okay. Uh, you reminded me of one of the favorite phrases, I think from your website was something about unleashing a, a priesthood of believers into the world. So, and that yes. unleashing really grabbed me. It was very compelling um, and a little threatening to the rest of the world, which I love. <laughs> like, right. Out, I know. I kind of like right? that too. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> uh, so what, you know, what's the broadest part of this vision? Like what, what are your real dreams for this in the next three, five, 10 years? So really it, I mean, we've got all these visions for, you know, like how many communities we want to be part of and how big we want to grow our online platform to. And, you know, I mean, like we could talk about that, but really what it comes down to is I, I have this like burning desire to show people how like individuals, how to connect with God in a way that radically transforms their life. And so in, it, really that's what all of this comes down to is wanting to, to get people to understand that faith supersedes religion, that, that God is bigger than anything we've created or imagined or written about or contained. And so, um, and so that's really kind of the driving force behind all of this is just seeing, seeing this sort of like ripple movement kind of um, go out from our church that, that helps people just connect with, with the, the reality of the mystery of faith and how that can just be a part of everyday life. Wonderful. Yeah. I think you mentioned also sort of decentering the Sunday gathering and more yeah. of a, you know, your daily uh, contact and, and devotional practices with God. Yeah, I think I think that's really one of the unique advantages that we have as digital ministry leaders is that we have the opportunity to be in everybody's pocket all the time. Mm -hmm. And so it's not about trying to coerce people into coming to a building for one hour a week on Sunday to do the thing and check it off and you know move on with their life, but it's really about the idea that like as a digital ministry, we have the ability to stay connected to people 24 seven on some level, right? Like even if people aren't directly engaging, they're still, they're getting the notifications. So they've got this little buzz in their pocket that, you know, reminds them of what's going on. And, sure. and even if all it does is, you know, it, cause, cause you think about it, like when, when you get a Facebook notification, right. Um, even if you don't open Facebook to see what's going on, you've got somebody's name that just popped up on your phone and you've thought about them, even if it's just for half a second and then you put your phone away and whatever. So we're trying to do that with God <laughs> basically yeah. is this, this idea that like God's always with us and is in everything with us and should be part of everything that we're doing. And by taking advantage of the tools that we have digitally, like we can stay connected to that 24 seven. And so that's the emphasis really here is, is not just about like what you do for one hour a week, but it's, it's who's on top of your mind all day, every day. And how do we make that God? I love that. Although the kind of image of, 
digital notifications as like the new church bells or the new new call right. to prayer, that little, yes. oh yeah, okay. Exactly. I'm back exactly. into that space, no matter where I wanted to get away from it or, or moved from it with right. my other distractions. That's lovely. Yep. Yep. Um, so where, where have you uh, encountered God in the digital ministry, even your own experiences? You've been in this uh, pre-AOL days, um, or, or, you know, within, within painted prayers. Yeah. I have seen God move in so many ways and it, it always bothers me when people say that, you know, online ministry is not real ministry or, you know, God can't show up online. And, and to me, it, it, that's such a ridiculous statement just by the fact that God is not physical anyways. <laughs> And so why would we have to experience him physically? (laughs) And so, so it's just kind of a a mind bender, I guess. But, um, but yeah, I have seen, I've seen relationships form that completely transform lives. I've seen people getting, I mean, saved and not just their eternal souls, so to speak, but I mean, I've, I've walked people out of domestic violence situations just by having relationships with them online. Um, I have helped people find answers to health concerns that strangely enough, they just happen to align with mine. And by the chance that we happen to be in a Facebook group together, we were able to make a connection and I was able to point them in the right direction to get the answers that their doctors hadn't found up to that point. Um, I mean, there's just so many, there's so many ways that I think God can move, um, even more powerfully than in our physical, tangible everyday lives, because it's easier to make the really bizarre connections. And it's easy to, I mean, like, think about the, the, the people that you're maybe Facebook friends with, or you follow on Instagram and like how, how varied those people are. I mean, like if you looked through my list of Facebook friends, I've got, you know, like random second, third cousin, distant relatives. I've got people I went to high school with elementary school with, um, people that I met in a networking event, people that I've never met in person, but have like become best friends with online. I mean, so just the way that all of these connections and relationships are able to be woven together, Um, even the way that, like, I just think about how cool is it that God can tweak the Facebook algorithm so that you see the exact post that you're meant to see right when he wants you to see it so that you can speak into someone's life and make a difference or so that somebody else could speak into your life and make a difference. Right. I mean, like, it's just so cool to think about the possibilities of what God can do using online, uh, tools and ministry and, and just the connections that we've got there. Well, that is probably one of the most positive and compelling, and honestly, I feel awful for never thinking about that, but the most <laughs> positive depiction of the Facebook algorithm I've ever experienced. Right? right? It can be <laughs> used by more than just advertisers. actually be in that code, but you, why yes. not? Sure. As you say, exactly. we believe, uh, we proclaim a God who is ubiquitous. And yet we've limited, right? Uh, so of course, yeah. of course that's possible. Yeah. That's wonderful. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that with me. <laughs> <laughs> that's wonderful. Church websites are often outdated, difficult to use, and not very welcoming. And it can be hard for churches to keep up with the latest technology and trends. Website design is constantly changing and most churches lag far behind the rest of the web. Faith Growth provides church websites that are easy to update, no maintenance, with a modern design that's welcoming to visitors. Our process helps create a website that's unique to you so you can reach the community near you. Schedule your free consultation at faithgrowth.com and see how we can help you reach your community. What do you... um? What do you think the church, meaning traditional congregational ministries right now, Mm -hmm. is is getting wrong or has misconceptions about, particularly around digital ministry? You mentioned some things, but I'm going to give you some more platform there. Yeah, yeah, I think it's hard because 
I think it's really easy to sit outside and point out all the flaws, right? Sure. And and I think I think that there's been a definite trend of us digital ministry people doing that. <laughs> and so yeah. I always want to be really careful with this conversation. I think it's not so much about what they're doing wrong, so much as um, maybe ways that they're looking at things wrong or sure. maybe they're, they're yeah, having... misconceptions. Could, yeah. Could things yeah, that yeah, just yeah. Aren't leading them toward growth where, you know, right. Right. And I think, I think the biggest thing that I see honestly is this like scarcity mentality mm. that, that so many, um, traditional ministry leaders have taken, where they're desperately trying to get people back in the building, back in the pews. Um, they are frantic and quite frankly, some of them are despairing over the, the loss of numbers, the uh, lower giving amounts, all these things. And I think, I think the, the, the very human urge to cling to what used to work and try to like drag it back into the present with us. Um, I think that that can, that can do a lot of harm, not just to like the individual ministry souls. Right. I mean, like think about the, just the, the numbers that we've been hearing about the amount of pastors who have wanted to quit this, you know, over the past couple of years, the, Um, the very real mental health struggles, the burnout, the suicides. I mean, it just goes on and on. And I think, I think a, a, a big part of my heart in all that is just that I wish that, that people would see that we have the abundance of Christ in ministry, not just in life. And so to, to cling to this sort of like worldly scarcity mindset of like, there's not enough there's not enough to go around, right? There's not enough butts to put in seats. There's not enough dollars to fill the coffers. There's not whatever it is. Um, And, and then to instead just open-handedly offer it up to God and, and say like, what, what would you have us do with this Lord? And, and recognize that, you know, some of these things that we're fighting against the, the digital ministry and the, the ideas that we're producing here, um, a lot of these are actually geared towards growing congregations beyond just the event, beyond just getting them in the building. Um, and it's really a call back to sort of the original community of church and like the, the ways that Jesus envisioned and, and preached toward, um, you know, communal living and solidarity with one another and, and being in constant fellowship and, and that's just something that I think the the traditional church has missed out on for quite a while. And so I I would offer this as is not not doing away with the old, but just an invitation to something broader and more expansive. Yeah, I like that. Thank you. What you have taken on quite a bit for yourself through this <laughs> and and planting or working on this uh, ministry plant. How, and, and, you know, you've both talked about how this through digital ministry, it's like constantly accessible, but that also means like you're constantly accessible in some ways and the right. work is always in front of you. So I'm just mm-hmm. wondering how, how are you finding um, some balance or some limits or a, a place, a place to keep you healthy and whole through this work? Yeah, I, I'll be honest, I am still working on that and not yeah. perfecting it <laughs> by any stretch of the imagination. Um, but I will say that one of the, the key sort of like mind frame shifts that I've had to really embrace is recognizing um, that it's not just work, right? So like my, my congregation exists and I have to shepherd it. And I'm, you know, I'm, I'm in part leading it and sort of like, I have the ideas behind all of this or whatever. Right. But I'm also a member of the congregation. And so I also get to participate fully in this community. And for me, I think that's one of the saving graces is that, um, there's a temptation, I think in ministry to, uh, sort of hold yourself above the fray and to, to not, um, you know, and it's, it's, 
it's a fine balance because there are certain, you know, you do need healthy boundaries. You do need, you know, some sort of limitations in there, but also um, if you don't have that sense of family community um, of, of, of these people being your actual brothers and sisters in Christ, I think that it can, it can lead to burnout a lot faster because then you are just looking at it as work is constantly buzzing instead of my community is constantly active. Right. And so those are two very different mindsets. And I think for me, um, just trying to keep, keep it in the front of my mind that, you know, this is my, this is my community. These are my people. Um, and so it's not just a job. It's not just work. I think that definitely helps. Great. Wow. That, that sounds so healthy. Well, <laughs> so like I said, you. I'm working on it. <laughs> yeah. <sure>. Okay. <laughs> No, I hope, I hope uh, that reality is, uh, comes to complete fruition there. It sounds really wonderful. Um, do I dare ask you, is there something, <laughs> is there something that you uh, tried during this process that you failed at, but it was helpful, that it was unexpected, something you wanted to do, and it just didn't turn out the way you did, but it, let's say maybe flushed you somewhere else or oh. was beyond. Oh, so many, so many things. Um, <laughs> that's actually a very good summary of my entire life up to this point. Okay. Um, <laughs> in that, um, I felt so, okay. So before I got locked into this calling and realized that God was planting a church through me and everything, um, I felt really flaky um, I bounced around through a lot of different sort of iterations of me. And so, you know, I was a photographer, I was a wedding planner, I was a, um, designer. I mean, I did all these different things and I felt like every time I sort of pivoted and, and switched lanes that people around me were probably like, what is she doing now? Like what on earth? <laughs> and so I just felt really like flaky or whatever, but but every step of the way, like I learned either a hugely important lesson that I'm now applying to my church plant as it exists today, or I learned skills that I needed to be able to plant this church today. Mm -hmm. And so I think for me, the, the, the biggest thing that I've learned is that, um, even all the failures and all the mistakes and all the confusion along the way has led exactly where God wanted it to. And so, um, I think I give myself a lot more grace now than I did in the moment, <laughs> you know, when those things were happening, but sure. I mean, even some of the things that I tried in running my own businesses, um, a lot of those produce the lessons that now I don't have to learn in the church because I've already learned them in, you know, other realms, so to speak. That's great. That's really great. Has can you tell us about something that was unexpectedly wonderful that happened in your digital ministry in the last year or two? Yeah. So actually I'll jump back to to sort of the before I realized it was a church plant. Sure. Um, and when it was was the ministry, but um I so I was teaching all these workshops and things were going really great. And I was like building this fantastic momentum around the ministry. And then, uh, my health took a downturn and I found myself unable to go out and do the workshops. I couldn't, I couldn't go network. I couldn't even share about this stuff. Um, couldn't even get out of bed. And so, um, I found myself really wrestling with God and saying, okay, I know you called me to do this. I know this is what you have for me. So why are you taking it away from me now? Like, it doesn't make sense. And, uh, finally God sort of, um, put me in my place and said, do you really think you're the only one that can teach this? Mm. And so that was, quite the gut punch, but I needed to hear that because then that was sort of the turning point where I started to create the curriculum to train other people to, to teach the workshops. And when I launched the workshops or the uh, training, sorry, the, um, the, the thought I had was, well, maybe a couple people from my town will, will jump on and, you know, they've been through the workshops, so they are already on board with this and I'll train a couple of them and see how it goes. I had eight people from across the, the country 
in like crazy, only God can do it ways connect uh-huh. with me to take this training. Mm. And so, I mean, just things like that, where I thought like, this is the end of everything. <laughs> like, this is where it all just goes sure. to die. And God instead like took it to a whole new level. And, and that really is what allowed for the birth of the, it to become a church. But oh, yeah. that's amazing. Thank you for sharing that. Mm -hmm. So we are about at the end of our time. So I want to kind of end by giving you an opportunity to share something you haven't had the chance to share something that you just want to get out there. You want to tell us about that's on your Hmm. mind. Boy, that's a big one. I think, I think more than anything, I, I want to reiterate just the fact that there are so many people who will never walk through the doors of a church Mm. and our online ministries are the only chance they have of connecting with God and plugging into a church or any sort of faith life. Mm. Um, you know, I think about people like myself who are disabled or chronically ill, um, people who are battling mental illness, um, anxiety and depression and things that make it impossible to, to go out in public, Um, people who have been seriously hurt by the church in the past, uh, people who have um, just had horrific experiences of abuse. And, and, um, and I just think about all of them and, and how God wants us to reach them too. And so I would encourage anybody who's on the fence about when it comes to thinking about digital ministry and whether it's biblical and whether it's you know, theologically correct and everything. Um, I would just encourage you to think about the ways that we can uniquely reach people and, and just lean into that a little bit more. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much, Brianna, for chatting with me today. Uh, Where can people find you or rather, where do you want to be found (laughs) online? That's, That's a better way to frame that. I like that. Um, so you can go to our website. It's paintedprayers.org. So pretty easy to find there. Um, also, I'm pretty much on all the social medias as uh, Bri Haida, B-R-I-H-E-I-D-A. And uh, yeah, that's you can find me pretty much anywhere on the internet. Great. Thank you. We'll, well put those in the good on places on the internet. In not- the- <laughs> <laughs> we'll put those uh, links in the show notes so people can find you where you want to be found in the good Perfect. places. Uh, So thanks again. Thank you to everybody listening. Uh, We want to invite everyone listening to join us in our private Facebook group, How We Do Digital Ministry. That link is in the show notes too. It's a great place to join with colleagues to discuss all things digital ministry, you know, on the other six days of the week when you're not getting a new episode of this fabulous podcast. Uh, Until then, peace and blessings to you all.